Hi, I'm Stuck, and this is Bounty Thursdays. And today's episode is sponsored by no other than the amazing team over at Pentester's Lab. If you want to up your game and become a better pen tester, head over to pentesterslab.com and sign up for a free trial. So we know that DNS is the mother of everything good and mother of everything evil. If you're doing pen testing, if you're doing bounties, you know the importance of collecting subdomains. And you also know the importance of getting accurate resolving results on those and getting maybe some IP addresses. So the gang over at Project Discovery has new tool called DNSX which is a fast multipurpose DNS toolkit that allows you to run multiple probers using the retriable DNS library. This is totally great because let's say that you found a bunch of subdomains. Maybe you just dumped it from CRT.sh and you want to see if those are alive or not. You'll just pass that over to DNSX and add that dash resp on it so you get the IP addresses out. And now you have a great selection of valid working uh, subdomains and IP addresses that you can pass over to MassCam and uh, get see what por ports are open on those. And one really, really neat feature of DNSX is the wildcard filtering. Because if, if somebody hosts a domain and it will resolve all, yeah, whatever, blah, 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 dot, foo.com on it you will end up with a massive list of just false positives you don't want that to happen so th this this has a little bit of algorithm in it that will see if the responses are the same it will filter them out so you will just only get the valid requests uh, back easy simple fast i really like it speaking of notifications Bitwise has released a burp extension that's called burp to Slack. So let's say that you're running a massive word list or something, or you're looking for certain information. Maybe you're letting your, I don't know, you may be using Turbo Intruder uh, to run a word list, and that's going to take a very, very long time. And you just want, you, and you, if it matches on, let's say 200 or something, you want that to be sent straight to your Slack. So you'll get a notification in your phone. So you're ready like, oh, smash. That's a good one. I need to look that look into that this is a really cool feature um i'm happy that he put that out and it, it's just it's super fresh so uh, head over there download it straight from the github and uh and play around with it and see your results so if you've been doing bounties for a while and you're over at hacker one you realize that you probably have a bunch of private program that aren't really active anymore and all of us wants to be on programs that are active and yeah you're showing up because we show up. So DC solved that solution by creating a Ruby script called list disabled pro private programs or RB. And what it really does is it takes your hacker one token and it checks for whatever programs that's been, let's say, active for the last 90 days. So you have a, you have a way for you to go through those and say, I'm not interested in partaking in this because if you disable or leave a private program, you will get a couple of new invites. So. It's a really nice system for you to stay updated and see what's going on. So definitely give that a try and yeah, clean out your private list a bit. Maybe you've been thinking, hmm, should I create a script that takes all the parameters from Gao or Hackcrawler or Wayback URLs and see if those are vulnerable for XXS attacks? But you don't really have to because Tom Nom Nom has already created one for you while he was flying over the ocean with no internet connection called KXSS. So what you can do is that if you have all that information, you can send that over to KSSS to see if it's uh, reflecting that. So you will get a list of the ones that potentially will be vulnerable for XXSS. Really useful. And another tool that's been doing that for a very long time is a burp plugin called Reflector, and it does the same thing. Less than, ampersand, quotation mark, and all that stuff. It's gonna put those straight into every request that you do, so you will see if the parameters or fields and stuff are uh, vulnerable for XXS. And it will notify you if you're running the proof version, so you will see maybe there's a potential XXS here. Super cool stuff for you to just dig into and maybe find some really nice stuff. And since we're talking about XXSs, we just need to mention that Fire Descriptor has released a Chrome extension that abuses trusted types to find DOM XXS. 
I'm not going to pretend I understand how that works. But if DOM XXS and trusted types or untrusted types is something that you're interested in, you should definitely head over to his GitHub repo, download that one and just give that a go. It seems super useful. It's just not my kind of game. The one thing about when you're doing a pen testing gig or something, you know that documentation is really important. But having dynamic documentation is something that most of us usually don't have. You'll run your tools, you collect it into a Word document and you have it there or, or you're storing it somewhere else. Um, unless you have an automation flow, this is going to be a manual work for you. But if you didn't see the talk that Omar Bida and his crew presented over uh, at B-Sides, um, it's called a drop of Jupiter, a Muller approach to penetration testing. And what they're doing here is that they are using Jupiter as the base where and then running a couple of different tools inside the uh, document is really, really cool because you can have dynamic uh, lookup of subdomain enumeration, cloud enumeration, GitHub enumeration and showdown probing and a lot of stuff directly into your documentation. And this is continuous. So you, uh, you can even have a you can prepare it and say these are the kind of stuff that we always do uh, when we're doing a vulnerability assessment or trying to figure out uh, what a target is looking like like a 360 view and you can just adapt and move things around in this and it's really really cool so i definitely recommend you to check out that talk and then spin up one of your own collie boxes and host a little bit of jupiter love on that and using their jupiter OSINT notebook and if you like it, contribute to it. I think it's, this is a really cool way of just making our work modular and not being very static and having to do the same thing over and over again. So the hacker was talked about the whole idea if you're using, um, let's say, a community version of Burp and you want to use FF, uh, FF for to post things and then send it over to Burp. And he took that to the next step. <laughs> and I love that because Lazy Fuzz is a wrapper around FFUF that's going to run the kind of things that you want FFUF to do and only take the valid results and send those over to Burp. This is a really nice way if you don't want to get your um, your log files all chugged up. And if you're running, let's say, if you're if you're only using community version and can't store your um your burp files. I think this is a good way for you to just get the positive results straight into burp and then you can dig deeper into the results uh, instead of just having to grip through all the output files that FFU have created. And if you haven't checked it out already, I totally recommend you to see the workshop that was presented at Echo Party, uh, Demystifying the Service Side by Hacklogic, I'm Noob and Rutash really really cool the way those guys just break down all the things that we like to look at server side stuff and if you're if you're new and a beginner in this field it's a really good information for you how to get started and understanding that kind of logic if you've been doing this for years it's a great refresher um we just can't have enough information right and especially not when it comes to server side bugs so I totally recommend you to check that out. It's available over at the Echo Party uh, Pandemic um, YouTube channel. So if you're playing around with cores and you want to make sure that you have a valid pack that works, you can always head over to Peter Healy's or Honoki's tool called Course, Misconfigura Course Mif Misconfiguration POC Builder. It's available over at toast.honoki.net slash course.html and you just smash in the, the URL that you want to verify if it's vulnerable to course or not and it's going to give you the information that it that is vulnerable back to you. Super simple, easy for you to just show that to whatever reporter that you do and say, okay, here's, here's your problem. <laughs> Check that out. Okay, I think that's about everything we have for today. So... Thank you very much for tuning in and I hope to see you around next week. So until next time, stay curious.